Hi, it's Josie and today I'd like to help one of you guys out. Someone left me a comment saying that they felt that they blocked their horse in the canter transition and they weren't sure how to go about not doing that. So today I have a fix for that for you. Um, the problem I find is that everybody wants it to look beautiful right away and it never does look beautiful right away. Um, I've trained enough unstarted and green horses to know that there is nearly always an ugly phase that things go through why the horses are trying to learn what you want them to do and how to do it. So if we're trying to learn something on top of their back, well that doubles the ugliness, okay? And it's okay for it to be ugly. Um, it's just that nobody talks about it and nobody shows it. So unfortunately, I don't have a horse that's ready. Um, I've got a young uh, green horse that I'm doing walk and trot on who's just started, the little Brumby, but he's not ready to do canter and I actually won't canter on him. He is uh, a little horse and I'm a little bit too big. I'm just going to get him going and sell him. But um, I am going to show you how I have worked through this problem myself. This has been a problem that I've had of blocking my horses in the up transition. So I'm going to show you on Spider how we will do that. And we're going to talk about the, tro uh, the canter transition, sorry. But this will work for any transition. It is the way it should be done. So first of all, actually, I might just do it in walk. because if you can get it in walk you'll certainly be able to get it in canter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to make sure you have nice up transitions regardless of whether it's halt to walk walk to trot trot to canter so what has to happen if you have your horse correctly on the bit and you have a less elastic um, arms the horse needs to go forward he needs a little bit of um, to do a good transition he needs a little bit of room to reach forward and step underneath his body if you have him jammed here and ask him to come under he's got to come back and he hollows his back and he lifts his head that is just the only way he can get to do the transition that you want him to do. So this is how I used to do this and this is for myself to learn, but now I do it on all the young green horses. So I'm going to just ask Spider to walk off. I'm going to exaggerate this. And so what I'm going to do is I put my hands forward and ask him to walk off. And my hands now come back. So I'm going to stop again. I'm exaggerating it. So I'm gonna put my hands forward and ask him to walk off. But as you can see, he does not, um, he, he does quite a nice little transition. Now I'm gonna block him, sorry Spider, and ask him to walk off and see if I can show you what happens when you block them. He, his spider won't even go there. Can you see that he come back and I could feel him dropping his back? I actually had to give him a bit of a come on, let's go because he was going, what's going on here? We'll try that again. So I'll just go, go, go. See how he's, he just, he's hollow. So now I'm going to, Put my reins forward and ask him to walk. That is literally how you do every up transition. But I'll show you the sophistication in just a minute. So let's now do that one into trot. So I warn my horse that I'm about to do, we're about to do a transition. Well, we're about to do something, so he's listening. Put my hands forward and ask him to trot. How was that? Walking put my hands forward and ask him to trot. Now I'm going to block him and ask him to trot because it helps, well I know it helps me if I see the bad as well as the good. This is not going to be a very nice spider, sorry. Trot, 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 trot. See, he won't even go because he's got nothing to go into. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about why you need to give the horse some uh, space so that he can step underneath, lift his back and do the transition. So let's do it into canter. So I will exaggerate again. I'll put my hands forward in the transition. So you can see, good boy. Did you see that? So he had somewhere to go.
I'll see if I can block him. Sorry, spider. Oh, yep, see, he just, he goes nowhere when he gets blocked. So how do you then refine that so you're not throwing the reins at the horse? You need to do a lot of practice of yourself, and I did most of mine at um, halt to walk and walk to trot, to give your hands an ask. Stop. Give my hands ask. Stop. Give my hands ask. And then when that has become a little bit of a habit to you, all you need to do yourself is think, give your hands, and I gave my hands then. You probably didn't see it, but Spider certainly felt it. So my hands may have gone two millimetres forward or... So when you're a little bit more habitual about giving your hands forward in the transition or just before you ask, then what you do is you just really think it and your body should almost relax your hands a little bit forward. Sometimes it is a one or a two millimeter give. Sometimes it's just relaxing my hands, my fingers, so that he has somewhere to go. So when you're ready to do a walk to trot now, I'm warning him we're going to do something and then I relax my fingers, my hands just, yep, give him somewhere so that he can go forward and step under. When it comes to canter, I will prepare him for the canter transition in as much as I've done a canter um, video. I'll link that above and you can go there, but I will prepare him and then I will give the, the rein. Good boy. Good boy. So I hope that helps you. You need to practice these skills. They're skills that once you've learned the habit and you've hardwired it into your body, you don't have to do it consciously anymore. It happens subconsciously. That takes time. There is no shortcut for that. It's worth doing though, I absolutely promise you. Thanks for watching.